A man saved a lion and her cubs years later. Originally born in Ukraine. Alex lived in one of South Africa's wildlife parks for the majority of his life. The veterinarian loved nature and the wild feeling that the plains of the Serengeti gave him when he would trek over them. Tucked behind some rocks a short distance away was a female lion. He had never been so close to one in the wild before. And the sheer size of the beast amazed him. At first. He panicked and began to level his gun at the animal. As he was certain the lioness would try to attack him. But all she did was growl at him. That's when Alex noticed a problem. The lioness was not attacking him because she couldn't. It turned out that her foot had somehow gotten caught in a trap. And she was unable to move more than a few feet before it became too painful for her. Alex was both relieved that he was still safe and horrified that such a beautiful animal had been trapped in such an inhumane way. It clearly looked like the work of poachers who no doubt would be back to finish the lion off and sell what they could to make a bit of money. Alex was upset at the idea that the feline was simply going to be killed for money. And he knew that he had to do something to help her. He decided to try and edge closer to the lioness to see if he could get close enough to the trap to set her free. But as he got closer, the frightened animal reared up at him and swiped out with one of her massive paws. Alex quickly threw himself back out of her reach and into safety. He had managed to escape unscathed. But he knew that the lioness wouldn't allow him anywhere near her. Thanks to his experience with wild animals, Alex had noticed another problem. When the lioness had swiped at him, he had seen her belly, more specifically her teats, which were swollen and laden with milk. This meant that the lioness had cubs nearby who wouldn't be able to survive long without her. With this new development, Alex knew that he had to act fast. If the cubs were left alone for too long, they could starve to death or die of thirst. Worse still, another predator could find them and kill them as they would not be able to defend themselves. With the lioness still tied up and not willing to let Alex close to her, the kind-hearted man only had one choice left. He would have to find the cubs and bring them back to the lioness himself. Luckily, Alex knew that they couldn't be too far away. So he searched around until he came across some tracks. He followed the tracks a short distance away from the mama lioness until he began to hear a few mules. He followed the mules to some long grass where he found three small cubs hidden amongst it all. Calling for their mother, Alex quickly collected the cubs up in his arms and walked back towards the trap line. Upon seeing her cubs, the lioness began her roaring again while trying to tear herself free of the trap. Alex was nervous as he didn't want to upset the mama into such a frenzy that she would hurt herself. So he gently laid the cubs down one by one. Once on the ground, the lion cubs began calling out again and slowly made their way over to their mama. The entire time they walked, Alex was talking to the lioness in a calm and soothing manner reassuring her that he did not want to hurt her and that he was actually trying to help her. Upon seeing that he wasn't a danger, the lioness calmed down. And as her babies finally made their way over to her, she laid down and allowed them to get some milk. Alex watched from a safe distance as the family reunited once again. He was glad that he could bring the cubs to the safety of their mother once more. But he still had the problem of how he was going to get the lioness free. For a while, Alex simply sat a short distance away from the lion and spoke to her in a reassuring manner. He had no clue just how long the lioness had been trapped for. But he realized that she must have been hungry as she still had to produce milk for her cubs. Assuring the mama big cat that he would be back. Alex quickly ran back to his truck and drove around the area a little bit until he came upon a zebra carcass. Although the animal had very little meat left on it, he knew that it would be enough to give the lioness a little bit of strength back.
The brave man cut a large chunk of meat off of the deceased animal and headed back to the lioness and her cubs. Upon his return, the lioness wasn't as hostile as she had been previously. In fact, she seemed quite eager to see the man again. Especially as he was carrying a large chunk of meat for her to eat. Alex watched as the feline licked her lips and smiled knowingly. He spoke gently to the animal before giving her the meat. The lioness hesitantly got up and sniffed the meat before digging into a meal. Whilst the lioness was distracted, Alex saw this as his moment. He slowly and cautiously approached the lioness and quickly shot her with a tranquilizer to sedate her. Before the meds kicked in, he loosened her paw from the trap and tried to lure the lioness into the back of his truck where he had already placed the three cubs in a kennel. So focused on his task. However, Alex failed to notice that the lioness had stopped eating and had gotten within a couple of feet of him. As a shadow fell over him, Alex slowly looked up to see the lioness inches away. But instead of getting angry and attacking, the lioness simply stood there. The lioness was hurt and couldn't walk properly. Alex wanted to get her into the back of the truck before she was out cold. And gave her a little nudge. The lioness understood she needed to obey and did something completely unexpected. Before she leaped into the truck to get to her cubs. She approached Alex and began to rub her head against him much like a house cat would do. Once the lioness was in the truck, Alex tied her down and drove as quickly as he could to the reserve where he lived. As Alex drove away, he couldn't help but feel amazed at what had just happened. At the reserve, he and the other workers nursed the injured lioness back to health and took care of the cubs. During that time, the lioness and her cubs bonded more and more with Alex. After a few months, it was time to bring the lion family back to the wild. Before they parted ways, the lioness cuddled with Alex one last time as they had grown fond of him. A few years went by with Alex not seeing any of the lions that he had helped save that fateful day. Then one day, he came across an amazing sight. A pride of lions were all lazing around under the tree that he had once used himself to have his lunch. As he came to a stop a short distance away from the animals. One of the lions lifted his head and looked at him. Upon seeing the man. The animal quickly got up and began to swiftly walk towards him. At first. Alex was nervous as he didn't want to be attacked by a big cat. But as the feline got closer. He began to realize that he knew him. It was one of the cubs that he had saved so many years before. Alex was amazed that he had come across him and even more shocked that the lion seemed to remember him. Once the lion was close enough, he began to nudge his head against Alex much like his mother had done years beforehand. Alex laughed and cautiously stroked the beast's fur before the animal withdrew and made his way back to his pride. Alex couldn't be happier. The cub had remembered him and what he had done for his family. Knowing not to overstay his welcome. Alex turned his car around and began to make his way back home. But not before hearing a loud roar from the male lion. Even though he knew that it was likely a once in a lifetime occurrence. Alex couldn't help but think that he had managed to create such a strong and lasting bond with the lion in such a short amount of time. And while he never saw them again, he couldn't have been happier with the experience that he got to share with such amazing creatures. The lion was wrapped around his neck by wire for three years. And you can imagine how torturous and painful it was for him. But unlike human beings, he could not use his arms flexibly. And he could not use some tools. The bondage of wire made his life greatly shackled. Until one day after three years, he finally got rid of this shackle. In fact, the lives of animals are always in danger. Due to human factors. 
such as human desire for a certain part of rare animals or just the mentality of seeking novelty. Poachers will kill these animals and lead to death or even extinction. Many such tragedies spread on the internet. Even if they are as fierce as lions, their experiences are sometimes shocking. This story about lions happened in Mikumi National Park. Over the years, poachers have frequented the national park, causing many animals to die or be seriously injured. In 2009, as always, some poachers set traps in the national park in the hope of catching animals. This is an illegal act. And it is this trap that keeps a young lion in a state of extreme pain for three years. Mikumi Park is Tanzania's fourth largest national park. So there are a wide variety of animals. Including elephants. Buffaloes. Zebras. Wildebeests. Hyenas. Leopards and lions. Which roam freely in the park in search of food. On a sunny afternoon in 2009, a lion cub set out for food. He often went out with other lions in the park. So although he was young, he knew how to hunt. When it arrived at the field, he crawled in the tall grass waiting for the unsuspecting animals to pass by. The young lion didn't know that this would be its last hunt. At least for the next three years. After 20 minutes, the young lion began to get impatient without finding its prey. Besides, the weather became unbearably hot. As time went by, the fasting lion was going to go home. But just as the lion was about to give up hope, it found an antelope. Lions are the second fastest cats in the world. With a top speed of 50 miles per hour or 80 kilometers per hour, but this speed is only a short burst, which is very exhausting, which is why lions must approach their prey before attacking. So the lion waited until the antelope was close to him before attacking, but unfortunately it missed the target and the antelope began to run for its life. The young lion was not the kind of hunter who would give up easily, so he began to chase the antelope. And the chase lasted about two minutes until an accident happened. The lion was blinded by the desire to hunt its prey. And did not see the trap set by the poachers. So it crashed directly into it. A strange device with a metal hoop and a bait in the middle. And when the lion put his head into the trap. It immediately slammed shut. The lion tried to break free from the trap. But the trap was merciless and it would only pull tighter. And as time went by the poor animal still tried to break free. But all to no avail. The sky began to change. Like molten brass. And the daylight began to lose. And soon the moon became the only visible light source. And it looked coldly at the poor lion like a haughty god. The lion was still trying to break free from the trap. And at last at dawn the lion managed to break free from it. But the iron ring still hung around its neck and did not move. The young lion was obviously exhausted. He looked so miserable that he could only lie alone on the grass. Sadly. This would be the beginning of a terrible life. After a while. The lion. Who had regained some strength. Got up to seek his friend. When the trap had plunged deep into his flesh. When the injured lion found the herd. The herd saw that he was badly hurt. And they sympathized with him. Sadly. All they could provide was their love. Spiritual support and care. Obviously. None of them could take the iron hoop from his neck. As time went by. The lion's condition worsened. His wounds became infected. And each day the iron ring plunged deeper into the lion's neck. Making it difficult for him to run. Breathe. Or eat. 
and the poor animal was in a miserable situation. Its wounds continued, and the discomfort caused by the trap made it impossible for it to move freely. So how did it survive? And would he starve to death? Yes. Because of the iron ring. The lion could not hunt. And would probably starve to death. But fortunately his family came to save him. And they brought him food every day. And so on for three years. Whenever they go hunting. They always come back with the lion's share of food. They never tire of it. This is probably the friendship between animals. Sometimes. The feelings between them are much deeper than we think. Now that food is out of the way, what about the iron ring around the lion's neck? Can it be freed from it? A few months later. The park rangers finally noticed the injured lion. And they started a rescue mission to remove the iron ring from his head. Obviously. Their work was not smooth. Otherwise it would not have lasted for three years. When they started tracking the lion. The lion kept away from them. The lion. Who had experienced being hurt by poacher's traps. Was afraid of and wary of human beings. It began to hide in the distant wilderness. So the rangers could not find it. Besides. It had the protection of relatives. Who wouldn't let anyone near it. In the end. They can only turn to a wildlife rescue team. The operation to save the animal began. And the team members were divided into several groups. Each of which was assigned different tasks. The first group was tasked with catching the lion and sedated it to take off the iron ring while the other group had to drive away the lion's relatives. All the teams did their best. And within a few days they finally sedated the lion and cut off the iron ring around its neck. This is an easy thing to say. But difficult to do. Because if they take longer to save the lion. The trap will make it unable to breathe and die. A team of veterinarians treated the animal. And then they released him. The rescue ended the lion's pain and torture for three years. Since the successful rescue operation. The lion has often visited the site where rescuers removed the iron ring from his neck. Although he is not too close to there. He always stares at the place for a few minutes and then walks away. Rangers think this is a way for the lion to express his gratitude. And he is very grateful to these rescuers for helping him get rid of his torture. A few months later, the lion appeared in people's field of vision again. This time, many things changed. And the lion's muscles increased a lot. The lion is now walking happily in the wild. But the scar on his neck is like a reminder of his painful experience. But will this be the last lion to suffer at the hands of poachers? Perhaps all we can do is curb poaching. Sadly, since the tiger population declined, there is an increasing demand for lion claws and bones. In parts of the Far East, researchers have proved that the lion population is rapidly decreasing. Fortunately, there are some projects that are rapidly becoming active, such as Tanzania's project, other parts of Africa and even the whole world. They are set up to protect national park areas. Mainly responsible for combating poaching activities. Hopefully. Projects like this will help protect the future of wildlife.